I've come here today to announce my candidacy for the Democratic nomination for President of the United States. My mission over the next 18 months of this campaign and over my, throughout my presidency will be to end the corrupt merger of state and corporate power that is threatening now is threatening now to impose a new kind of corporate feudalism on our country, to commoditize our children, our Purple Mountain's majesty. I want to move on to a, a, another issue that nobody's going to really want to talk about, but I need to. Listen. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm about halfway done with this speech. Oh. And, and this, is what, this is what happens when you censor somebody for 18 years. I've got a lot to talk about. They shouldn't have shut me up that long. Now I'm going to really let loose on them for the next 18 months. They're going to hear a lot from me. Uh, I'm going to talk about lockdowns. Um, And nobody wants to talk about it. But we need to understand, you know, I grew up at a time, most of my life was at a time that economists call the Great Prosperity. It's when the American middle class between 1945 and 75 grew to be the biggest economic engine in the, on the face of the globe. I mean, we were the economy in the globe. We made everything, and everybody looked to us, not only for goods, but for moral leadership. And we may, became the most powerful country in the world, unrivaled. And it was because and we had a stable democracy with institutions that people trusted, a press that told us the truth. And, um, and the destruction, that, you know, everybody knows it's an economic and political economic rule. You cannot have democracy in a society where there is high concentrations of wealth and widespread poverty. You need a middle class or you don't get democracy. And uh, that, that is a law. That is a law. You cannot do it. That. You cannot do it unless you have a big middle class, and we had that. Uh, but since the early 1980s, there's been a systematic attack on our middle class, and the coup de grace was the lockdown. The lockdown was the biggest shift in wealth in human history, and I'm going to tell you about that in a second. And I blame President Trump for the lockdown. Now, a lot of people will say. A lot of people say, and President Trump gets blamed for a lot of things that he didn't do, and he gets blamed for some things that he did do. But the worst thing that he did to this country, to our civil rights, to our economy, to the middle class in this country, was the lockdown. Now, President Trump, in fairness, let me just make this point, will tell people, well, the lockdown wasn't my idea. It was my bureaucrats rolled me on it. I was saying we shouldn't do it, but that's not a good enough excuse. He was the president of the United States. And as Harry Truman said, the buck stops here. On May 2nd, 2020, 600 doctors wrote, signed a letter to President Trump begging him not to allow the lockdowns. And they said, because at, at that time, all of the pandemic protocols anywhere in the world, the WHO, CDC, everywhere, the European Health Agency, all says you never do mass lockdowns. It causes much worse havoc and deaths and injuries than if you do the standard protocol, which is you lock down the the sick, you protect the vulnerable, and you let everybody else go back to work. Otherwise, you are going to wreak havoc. And of course... You know, and I wrote, I wrote about it for the, um, you know, on Instagram, I was writing every day. I was citing these economic studies that showed 
Every point in unemployment, you get, you get 37,000 excess deaths from heart attacks, suicides, you know, plus imprisonments. And I was writing about this. And they dumped me from the social base. They said, that's misinformation. But it was not. But people were saying it. People knew it. It wasn't just me. And we now know, of course, that it's true. There's now study after study and any, every comparison between the states and nations that locked down compared to those who didn't, you know, has shown the ones who locked down, the more you locked down, the worse you got. Worse COVID deaths, worse excess deaths. Sweden's numbers came out this week. Sweden was the only country in Europe that didn't lock down. It had the lowest excess deaths in Europe, which is very predictable. It's a nation... You know, the nation that led the lockdowns was us, and we had the highest body count of COVID on Earth. We have 4.2% of the world's population. We had 16% of the COVID deaths. At some point, even the media is going to have to say, stop saying this was a success story. Yeah. We, 